Welcome to the Recruiter Startup Podcast. Uh, today's guest is William Grishoff from Ox7. He is a member of our future leaders community, the Dinghy, where we help independent startups uh, connect with each other and share best practice. And we also have our mastermind uh, program where we're bringing people through that and helping them build the businesses that they are proud of, that they enjoy being in, and that really just worked for them. So uh, Will has been in business for a couple of years. He scaled up really quickly, had a bit of funding, uh, scaled down in Corona, independently owned now, and it was really interesting getting into his, his journey and some of the things maybe he would have done differently. Um, and we just had a general old chit chat. So hope you guys enjoy this. Hope lockdown isn't treating you too bad. There's still business to be had out there. You know, so just keep positive. Control what you can control. Get out there. Go for a run in the morning. Have your activities in the afternoon. Whatever it is that you can do to, you know, keep going. Do that. And uh, I'm sure 2021 is going to be an awesome year for us all. All right. We're live. Not live. We're recording. That is. How are you, Will? I'm good, mate. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm not bad. Where are you based? I'm based in South Northamptonshire, so um, yeah, right in central England. Not too far from Oxford, not too far from Milton Keynes, okay. not too far from Northampton. What are we, the 19th of October? Yes. And yeah. uh, Wales has just been locked down? Yeah. Just bullshit for them. Um, Manchester is fighting a lockdown. Ireland's been locked down. Northern Ireland's been locked down. Tory land is all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, think, what do you think? I was going to say, I think it's a matter, of a, t- a matter of time before the rest of us are, um, you know, kind of locked down again. I, can't, I can see this kind of circuit breaker, you know, or whatever they call it, being uh, implemented relatively soon for everyone else, unfortunately. So... I did a series of these podcasts when we got locked on and it was tough. Hey, eh? I, uh, I had a call from Sean Anderson day two uh, of it. Oh, Hey, do you want to come on the podcast? And I remember, th- and he'd already done a couple already. And I thought, I don't know if I can, I, I, I don't know if I can talk about this. And then I had a look at her books or Charlotte, Charlotte had a look at her books. We just rented this place in Santa Barbara. We were living our best life. And I think the like seven thousand dollars for the house for the month. It was like we were just going like completely out there, having an unreal time. That happened. My entire business fell away. I I was like, oh, uh, I I don't know what we're gonna do. I don't know how we're gonna do this. And and then I, I remember I thought, oh, I'm just gonna have to face it up. And I spoke to him. And then I started interviewing other people. And and. It was really helpful, actually. It was kind of cathartic speaking to some of the guys that had been there before, but me and you weren't, haven't really been there before, right? So yeah, not, not as owner. So before we kind of jump into where we're at now and what, what all this was about, when, when did it come about? When did, you, when did you set up your own business? So just oh, well, kind of to three years ago, so um, kind of early 2018, um, I, I set it up. It was very fortuitous, really. I was introduced to some people who... Um, wanted to start an agency, but wanted just to be kind of like silent investors um, because they, they had a business uh, in the hospitality um, sector and they looked at their books and they thought, oh my God, we spend a lot of money on agency fees. You know, if we kind of invested in one of our own, you know, that would potentially save us money. So, um, so yeah, that kind of came about and, you know, we've grown, um, you know, we've grown up and then grown down again. Um, so, so yeah, we're relatively small. We're relatively young, um, in the grand scheme of things. So tell me, so you, you start up, there's a couple of financiers behind you. Um, how, how does that like work? Like, how do you, how do you work out what you own of the business and how does, how does that whole thing work? So they had a shareholding. I had a shareholding. Um, we, so I suppose a bit the easiest way to describe it is like having an overdraft. They were like my overdraft, <laughs> which yeah. you know, um, setting up a you know a new business we we frequently had to use. Um, incredibly supportive, you know, from a, a number of different elements. You know, they were non-recruitment, so 
when we would have board meetings and discussions, they would give inputs which were kind of very non recruitment focused but incredibly useful because sometimes in recruitment you can be so kind of fixated on you know what you do normally and, and just take it as being you know best practice or what you should do and they questioned a lot of that kind of stuff which made me kind of I suppose introspectively think about whether it was the right thing to do or not so it was really useful having um having kind of access to those people and you know although they were our client and you know we did recruit from you know frequently they, they weren't actually kind of like massively big spenders because they didn't really need to um so i suppose with most people start up their own agency they have like two or three maybe even more big big clients you know who they can just kind of take and say yeah you know we're, we're doing on our own now so it was a bit of a struggle to begin with because you know although we had you know a relatively small business to recruit for we had to generate it all from scratch and um you know that's difficult you know at the best of times really but uh yeah it was tough really tough are they, are they still in the business um only a, a, a lot smaller shareholding so um given the nature of what we do march time they kind of said look you know the investment stops now your overdraft is gone you know you're you're on your own um and you know thank you very much you know we're still in lots of nice dialogue they've been really supportive like really really supportive yeah. kind of throughout of it all because there was a lot of stuff where you know they were kind of doing for me which you know i've had to absorb on you know on my own so i suppose since march i've kind of been you know doing finance stuff Grown i've been stuff. doing yeah, proper stuff, you know. It's like the apron strings have been cut and it's like, oh, yeah. fucking hell, I have to, VAT returns, they're annoying, aren't they? You know, that yeah. kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, I've been really unfortunate, uh, sorry, really fortunate to um, to have that support, though. Before COVID, were you buying your Ferrari? Nah, nowhere near. Um, I, I was really sensible. Like, you know, I, I didn't want to... Um, you know, we all know in, in recruitment, you can take huge margins, you can take loads of money out of the business and as a director or an owner, you can have a really nice life and do, you know, really cool stuff. But I didn't really want to do that straight away because I wanted to actually build the business because there's no way now that I could work for anyone else or I could, you know, go and, I don't know, be, be in someone else's business. So I need this to work. So, you know, yeah. I've been pretty cautious about it and, you know, <laughs> yeah nowhere near a ferrari mate nowhere near yeah. what happened in covid here what was like walk me through that because like i was on the floor for a bit and i wasn't sure like not only did we do rector we do inter we did international specific rector act supporters yeah. are shut and nobody needs a rector act <laughs> that is tough i mean yeah we we so we're a generalist agency so okay. you know i have consultants who work in lots of different sectors so from many perspectives that kind of was good for us because we always had like our uh we hedged our bets across a number of different industries so when it hits you know some of our industries some of our sectors were really badly hit like hospitality um health and wellness which is obviously of course like spas and stuff but then we had some others which were, you know, okay. And like come March time after the phone, call, I took the phone call, you know, to say, to be told that the investment had stopped and, you know, this is the amount I owed and, you know, kind of you're on your own. It, it was like, I mean, I, I sat in my bedroom and I cried, right? I sat on the edge of my bed and I cried for all, you know, all that hard work, everything I'd done for me now is like, oh, that's gone. You know, that's it. We're all fucked. You know, we're not going to be able to make payroll this month or, you know, everyone's going to lose their jobs. It was just like... What, what was your head count at that stage? Uh, 11 people. Oh, wow. So, uh, that, the billers in the UK? Yeah, yeah. All, all UK based. Uh, mixture of billers, marketing and resources. Jesus. Um, so, yeah. So that was just like panic central because as the kind of figurehead of the business like yeah. it's all on my shoulders right like you know people are going to be like well hold on a minute how am i going to pay my rent and my mortgage and yeah. you know i had those same feelings I, you know was your like burn rate like 30 grand or something like that or um about a bit slightly more than that about 33 34 wow and uh, when things collapse that's a lot of money to stump up like yeah you know. it really is it really really is so you know, that was, yeah, really difficult. And of course, at the time, you know, there was this deadly virus going around and people were dying left, right and centre. And it was like, you know, shit, we can't go to the supermarkets anymore or, you know, everything's closing down. So it was almost like the world was, world was imploding. And, you know, I was just like, 
this is crap man like I, I i know that a lot of people would have had it far far worse but um there was that kind of short period of time where it was just complete and utter like despair for mm. me and you know it was horrible but then you know slowly things kind of came there was a bit of clarity of so obviously the furlough scheme you know that was an absolute godsend for us like that completely and utterly mm saved us 100 percent um and it saved a lot of people's jobs you know for, for the short term anyway um so so you know I, as a as a business it was me and one other person working um we managed to agree relatively early doors exclusivity with a client who were going to continue to recruit you know we gave them a favorable fee but then we kind of secured their exclusive business um for the foreseeable future which again probably saved us um mm. because they continued to recruit um you know relatively high volume and then you know i i build and, and i did i kind of worked on jobs that i wouldn't usually have worked on so pre-covid i would have either you know passed it to someone else or would have said you know that's below our low fresh uh, our low lowest fee yeah. threshold so i ain't gonna do it so it was just kind of a case of turning my hand to whatever we possibly could just to get revenue in the door i'm, I'm not kind of so proud that i won't do the rubbish jobs um you know I, i'm happy to do it so uh so yeah it was just it slowly things got better and you know i don't, I don't want to use the word pivot because we didn't really pivot we just worked really really hard to go after stuff which you know was in very short supply um and that's partly why we're still just about here today good on you um what's changed for you at this stage? So like you've had a period of self-reflection, you were a generalist, pretty good at the marketing side of stuff, built it up to a certain stage. This got hit. What things have you changed in your business over the last six months? Like I, I could speak for my own business. Like we upgraded our tech. We got like, we got Andy involved in the decision-making process and like, guiding us a little bit just as somebody to bounce off um, set up a leadership network set up another business um, went from international to london got louise archer involved in selling helped us to make things a bit more retained as well as the core function and i just kind of got the team a bit more commercial got everything a bit streamlined and yeah. I feel like it's been it's been a hell of a time like but it it's all right like what, what what type of things like were you able to change so the first thing we did is we we got rid of our office um so we were really fortunate we had an amazing office but um at the kind of midpoint of march we were renewing our lease and you know we were just like well, i said no, hold on there's a very good chance we're not going to need to we're well, not be able to access it for a long time so we decided not to renew that and then looked at all the expenditure on um you know operational stuff that you know we, we what do we definitely need what do we you know what can we do without and um funnily enough most stuff you know we, we did need um but we looked at ways in which we could make it more efficient and um you know maximize what we're getting out of it so we, we made a lot of changes on that and you know we, we've made it a lot more leaner um i also started having um kind of coaching and you know business advice from another recruitment business owner who's got multiple businesses and he's very successful and he was a sounding board so you know a lot of the stuff I was kind of talking through with him he was you know he was listing and, and making asking me questions you know is this the right thing to do or have you thought about doing this and where do you want to be and all of that kind of bigger picture stuff and again for me having someone like that was hugely useful because you know I would have probably made some catastrophically bad decisions had he said oh hold on a minute you know why do you think that's the best thing to do but um so yeah we, we looked at everything kind of you know from a cost base and just kind of tried to bring it down as low as we possibly can um with, without you know losing too much headcount because ultimately we wanted to retain the headcount for when things get you know moving again and get going again um and you know i didn't want to be making people redundant or, or to lose their jobs um, so then kind of, you know, May, June, July, we, we were billing okay. You know, we weren't doing too badly. Um, and, and yeah, it's, you know, things have kind of gone so up and down. Um, mm. And 
it's it's you know it's been a really good opportunity to, for, for me to really kind of pin down what's important and you know how we're going to come out of this better than we went into it and you know unfortunately we're going to have a much lower head count coming out of it than we did going in but you know for the future of the business I think we're a lot better equipped to deal with incidents like this you know we're all home based at the moment we spend a couple of days Thursday and Friday in a co-working space um which is which is really good but you know going forward it's you know it's allowed us to kind of question what we've always taken for granted like you know be in the office um frequently but going going to you said about tech stacks we've always had pretty good tech stacks um and we've always had flexible working and you know work from home if you need to but most people wanted to be in the office so it's kind of a you know relatively natural thing but um but yeah we, we've been able to change a lot mm, very good um so we've uh, we've had you in our WhatsApp groups in our leadership network. You're actually in both groups, aren't you? You're I am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah. So we have we have another group for the big boys in the bounty, um, and uh, they they're guys who are beyond me and you. They're uh, the guys that have <laughs> fifty plus seats and uh, yeah, probably run businesses that might exit in a while. But how how would you describe the bridge group? And then how would you describe the dinghy? I'm, I'm, I'm curious because I haven't asked you this. Yeah, it's interesting actually. So the, the bridge is obviously slightly more formal. I think, you know, the, the people in that group are, um, you know, it's probably a slightly more experienced than the people in the dinghy. So for me, it's really interesting to see that contrast between the two. And, um, you know, there's probably questions which I would ask, which are a lot better suited to, you know, stuff in the bridge, you know, public li- liability insurance, legislative mm-hmm. stuff, which, you know, is really good because, you know, it's, people don't tend to share information all that much in recruitment. It's almost seen as, you know, like the bad thing to do. But in this group, in these groups, um, it's so, so refreshing for people just to try and do best by each other and give best practice advice. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that's consistent between the two but the, the dinghy is is you know a lot more relevant and a lot more um kind of interesting for me because i think i'm sharing a lot more experiences with the guys in there um you know in yeah, you're somewhere in between stuff. both worlds really that's in, right yeah yeah terms. yeah yeah but it's um it's nice to, to speak to people who are actively billing like i am and to go through the pain of you know dropouts and then the adulation of placements together um you know whilst we're working remotely and whilst you know we're, we're still quite small it's, it's nice to share that with um people who i think genuinely are pleased you yeah. know you go i've been in groups before and it, there's it's, it's a bit kind of i don't know tetchy but yeah. um the dinghy um you know especially it's a very supportive group which is um which is you know which is great yeah uh, it, we're watching them evolve in in real time, you know, so it's a, it's interesting. So we're, we're bringing eight of the eight members of the dinghy through a mastermind program at the moment. And uh, they're just the eight that put up their hand on a Saturday when, I, when, when we put out the announcement and, yeah. and we're doing that. We'll, we'll ha- it's been really fascinating going through everything from their goals to their processes and seeing where their gaps are. And it's mm. usually, usually quite, quite similar stuff, but getting all that information out there, they, out of every recession, you get loads of new businesses that spring up. Do you think the Do you think that the next wave of independent recruiters is going to be quite dominant in the marketplace? I was thinking about this, you know, um, probably for a short period of time. Yeah, I think whilst um, kind of bigger business adjusts and mm. kind of recalibrates to, to this new market, there will be a lot of opportunity for for smaller businesses you know the kind of bedroom businesses to uh, to pick up big wins and stuff but um how kind of sustainable that is and how well and you know how effective they can grow you know i suppose is, is down to them um you know when, when i've looked at kind of rescaling the business and regrowing without investment it's um it's it's quite scary you know because you think well you know if i had two more people that's another kind of seven or eight grand we have to find a month in order to survive and you know where we've brought our cost base so low anything above that is um you know thinking oh god you know like i don't yeah. want to do just yet but um you know maybe maybe i'm being overly cautious and you know there'll be people out there who are, are a lot more kind of gung-ho but i i think that you know people will probably have maybe a really nice 12 months where they have a nice lifestyle business and mm. you know do the school runs have a you know a great kind of balance and then um you know when 
the bigger ones for bigger guys have recalibrated and sorted out their tech stacks and sorted out how they're going to work. They're probably just going to hoover up a lot of business, I think. Um, but you know, I think let's see, who knows? It can like, I think things have changed for good. Like I, not in terms of the dominance of the marketplace, but like cities are never going to be the same. Mm, I know. I can't see, I, I can't see like rooms and rooms and rooms of suited and booted recruiters in front of their TV screen, like just behaving themselves and, and being micromanaged to an inch of their life. It, it, it just, it, how, how do you go back? Like, it's like you going back to work now. Do you know what, though? I, I think that there will be a, um, I think there'll be some companies who will really push that. I think they'll, as soon as they can, they will get everyone back in the office. They'll get that kind of busy sales floor kind of buzzing again. And I think there'll be a lot of people who, who will really like that. I don't think it will happen to all of them. Um, and, and, you know, personally, I do like to be in an office. I like the social environment. Yeah. I like being around everyone else. But I know, you know, that's relatively people now will have got used to working at home and demonstrated they they either can or can't do it mm. so going forward they'll be like you know well i'll spend two days in the office and three days at home now the issues that that's going to cause is how do you as a business owner like have a dedicated workspace but only to accommodate you know 40 percent of your workforce at any one time mm. for five days a week you know like the co-working spaces are really good but they're effectively shared spaces. So you can't have your own little kind of space unless you want to commit the, the money. So I they're think gonna it's going to be... change your pricing structure for oh, sure. Right? Completely, 100%. I mean, the one we use, they're called Perch and um, in Vista. They've been so accommodating and so kind of good with it all and given us like, you know, dedicated prices um, for the, the two days a week we go in. And, you know, we, we would definitely continue to use that because it's it just works. So it's nice to be around other people and you know just have a have that kind of face time with people i think and for your own business when you're when you're looking at the coming out the other side do you think are you going to like specialize are you going to keep on going in the direction that you've gone in so my mantra has always been the the, the recruitment process is the specialism so running a recruitment process from start to finish is what really you know, you pay someone to be a specialist in. Now, their subject matter knowledge, um, the consultant subject matter knowledge, and applying it to that um, kind of that sector is where the real specialism is. So, when when we when we say generalists, you know, I I mean, I've got someone who specialises in engineering technical, someone who does well, who did digital and e-commerce, someone who does health and wellness. So, in their particular sector, oh, they are. They, they, they are specialists, but as an agency, you know, we're a very much, you know, kind of, we can do lots of different things with the idea that, you know, further down the line, we can go into one business and, you know, offer like full service so we can do multiple bits within their business. Now, you know, that's kind of going to take a, a while for us to, to get as big mm. as, to, to, well, to get big enough to facilitate that. But it's, um, you know, it's something that, you know, we want to do going forward. What, uh, what's your current headcount? four so four people um and yeah that that may change that may go up in the next couple of weeks or so um must be nice yeah. having that burden of quite it's quite a like that's quite a reduction in in your burn rate eh? yeah it is it is, yeah it is but um it's also quite a reduction in revenue as well like you know january february time we were doing you know pretty pretty good pretty well and um our kind of year end is uh, july so july 31st our year end and um you know given that we had like four or five four four of those months kind of under pretty strict lockdown mm. you know just completely killed our kind of last year's financials um but but yeah it, it's nice to kind of not have the weight of all of that on um on my shoulders again it's you know it's it's it feels nice well it feels nice to an extent but obviously that comes with people losing their jobs unfortunately and, you know and moving on um so it's i suppose it's swings roundabouts i remember speaking at an event a couple of years ago and i bumped into your marketing manager or executive uh molly is that her name yes yeah molly adams yeah and uh i remember just being taken by your brand and i thought that's great work how how did you come up with the name? <laughs> so, 
Um, I didn't for a start. It's um, I'm not very creative, right? So when, when, when someone starts a business, a lot of the time, the most exciting part is coming up with a name. Mm -hmm. And um, like for me, I just I had no idea. I went through the usual kind of Latin stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I was talking to this creative guy who's done our website and he said, um, what about OX7? I was like, OX7? So our postcode was OX76UJ. I was like, yeah. yes, but seven, but written the word seven rather than the number seven. So it is all to do with our postcode. Now it just so happens that my favorite number is seven because I'm a Man United fan and the seven shirt is you know, relatively iconic. So that kind of worked in quite well. And, you know, it, we've, we never have experienced any kind of, you know, geographical restrictions. I, people said, Oh, I only thought you covered recruitment to now X seven. So yeah, that's, that's how the name came up. But yeah, but yeah I mean, M M Molly is the kind of, you know, she did all of the, the branding and, you know, it, she, I just gave her the freedom. She, um, she came in as a consultant, you know, doing hospitality recruitment initially. And she was really good at it. Like she genuinely was really good, but um, she was just so much better at the kind of social media marketing, all of that kind of stuff. So I just said, look, you're really good at this. You go and do it. You know, you have full autonomy. I trust you you know, thank you very much. And um, kind of over the years, she, she's done a really, really good job. And um, she's obviously, she's, she's moved on from, you know, permanently from us. So she, she now works with um, Mike Winnett and Ian at I Am Productions. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, but she, she freelances, um, she still does our content freelance now. Oh, right. so, um, so we've still got her, so I haven't got the headcount costs, but I've got, you know, the, the, the genius. So um, that's a good so, move yeah. on her though, hey? You, you oh, yeah. a big part in that. That's nice. Yeah, I mean, she she deserves it. She is. Um, I mean, she she kind of outgrew us, and yeah. um, you know, I I knew that one day she would go on to much bigger and better things. And for me, it was kind of holding on to her as long as we we could. Um, and she, you know, she will go out and be wildly successful. And I'm just really glad that she's, you know, contributed and and really helped us. And and hopefully she does continue to do that over the next few years. The you mentioned your you've always been interested in, in the marketing side, not being creative. What, what part do you think that holds in, in recruitment in, in the way that we do things? So, so for me, recruitment and the way we do it is more marketing led than sales led. Um, so, you know, for us, it's how you position that opportunity to, to, to clients and to candidates, how that is presented to them um, and, and how you kind of, how, how you get their buy-in. So, you know, we we obviously do BD and we do sales, but it's not just mindless cold calling. There's a lot more around it, and you know we've really looked into, you know, things like copy for emails, like what's going to get people to respond, and you know when we're writing um, adverts or anything to do with kind of attracting someone to a job, but we really kind of buy into all of that rather than just for kind of. The, you know, the hard sell and, you know, no thought into that, the copy and paste job specs as, as adverts, you know, we, we just, I hate all of that. And I really don't think it does the industry any favors when people. And who does that? Does, does your recruiter do that? Do they do the writing on that? Yeah. So they do the writing. So um, Molly went on Mitch and Jackie's copywriting course. Um, okay. yeah. And she, so obviously that was a game changer for her. And she came back and she kind of, taught us all how to do it to a relatively okay level so when i'm recruiting now when i'm looking for new consultants you know rather than saying you know they're an amazing salesman it needs to be they're an amazing marketeer you know they can yeah. represent themselves and kind of present themselves in the best best possible way as opposed to just being able to do 200 calls a day you know take 199 rejection calls and you know mm. have that one lucky call so it's a lot more i mean again it's this kind of stuff doesn't work overnight and it takes kind of years to, to really get that established, I suppose, that like inbound stuff. But, um, you know, we're on that road to doing it and that's where we want to get to. Yeah. I've obviously done it through this, 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 this medium, but um, I'm trying to do it from scratch with our business scale in Ireland and uh, Siobhan, who heads that up, we've, we've launched a diversity and inclusion. It's kind of the main theme at the moment. Focus podcasts. So I've been doing that and like letting, just almost like throwing an idea and just letting her at it. And it's, uh, yeah, it's really worked. Yeah. Um, and then I'm, and we're working with Richard Gibbard. I think we not, we, we showed you that in the group where he's doing yeah, some yeah. proper email sequencing and data, data cleansing and all that 
type of good stuff. I yeah. I probably should get Mitch Sullivan on and see what type of gems I can get out of him. The last time I asked him to come on, he he said, "Ah, oh, come back to me when, when when you've been doing it a bit longer." But we'll have to. That's a couple. <laughs> that's a couple of years ago, so I'll have to. I'll have to get down on bended <laughs> knee again. I reckon. <laughs> All right. No, well, Mitch, well, Mitch is good. Up, I, I spoke to him this morning. He's, yeah? he's a top bloke. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Sure be interested. Cool. All right. Well, listen, that's us today. Um, any parting advice for any of those young guns starting out in the dinghy who are in a, the most challenging market situation that we're probably going to face? So, my advice would be that nothing beats hard work. You know, you, yeah. as long as you're kind of putting it in and you know, really maximizing every opportunity. Um, you know, that, that, that doesn't, you can't replace anything with hard work. So, you know, that's kind of, you know, a relatively straightforward one, but, um, you know, just, just keep being persistent and, and keep, you know, keep at it and it, it will eventually come. Um, it's, it's so important just, uh, yeah, be, be persistent, work hard and, you know, maximize every possible opportunity all right pal well thank you so much for coming on and uh yeah wish you all the success for the future thank you mate appreciate it